Should you go with Solar Edge or Enphase? They're both great brands of inverters, but they operate on fundamentally different technologies, which makes one better for certain groups of people than the other. In this video, I'm gonna give you the technical information and the what you need to know to make an informed decision on which inverter brand you should go with. Let's dive into some quick solar inverter history. Thrilling, I know. Starting out, we have the first generation of solar inverter technology, which was the string inverter system. As you may or may not know, solar panels create DC electrical power. I'm gonna denote it here using the blue color, but your home and the grid as a whole operates on AC power denoted by red. So the first way that we have figured out to utilize the power from the solar panels, convert them to AC electricity using an inverter was using the string inverter system where, as the name implies, the solar panels are strung together like a string of Christmas lights and then fed into a single centralized inverter that converts all of that DC power into AC that your home can use and can be sold back onto the grid. Great, it works, but it's not so great. There are a lot of problems with this system. Number one, solar panels are diodes, which means that they have all the, the same quirks and features that a diode has. For example, if the voltage coming out of one of your solar panels is less than the voltage of the others that are in the string, for example, if you had a tree that was shading it or it just came out from the manufacturers as being slightly underperforming compared to the others that are in the system, it's going to bring all of the other efficiencies of all the other solar panels down to the weakest link in the system. Definitely not ideal. Problem number two is that if there's a problem in your solar system, you don't know which panel it's coming from. It could be any of the panels, it could be a combination of multiple of the panels. You don't have any way to monitor them in real time and figure out what their performance is. Then problem number three is that you're doing all of your inverting in just a single inverter. And so if your one inverter goes down, it takes down every panel in the system and you no longer create any power. So it wasn't entirely ideal. And that's why generation two came up. Generation two was the microinverter system. It was absolutely revolutionary at the time. Essentially what it did was that it took the same DC power that came off the solar panels, but they went into a shrunk down inverter and they said, hey, what if we put an inverter underneath of each panel? That way we don't have all the problems of the previous generation. So on your roof, under the panels, and then on the AC side, the inverters are strung together and then that power goes into your breaker panel and then can go back onto the grid. So problem number one, which was the shading problem gets solved because each solar panel is acting kind of like its own mini solar system. So instead of having one 20 panel solar system, you actually have 20 individual solar systems with their own inverters. So they don't mess with each other. Problem number two is solved that instead of having one inverter that can go bad, it's now that risk is spread over 20 individual inverters. So if one inverter goes down, it doesn't take down the entire system. And now with microinverters, you also get the ability to monitor every single panel on your roof and on your solar system. So you can see, hey, panel number 20 is not functioning as it should be. Let me go send a message to my solar installer and they can come take a look at it. So that was great. Microinverters are awesome and still a very viable technology. Today, I would say about, about half, about 50% of the homes that are getting solar installed are using microinverters. Enphase is the primary brand of microinverters right now. SunPower is also a huge brand of microinverter. They do something interesting where they pair, they don't just sell solar panels or just sell inverters, they sell a solar panel plus microinverter setup. So you can't really get one without the other. Both great brands, but moving on, we have the DC optimized string system. This is what SolarEdge is primary using as their main technology. And this is essentially the best of both worlds of both the generation one string inverter system and then the microinverter system. So same as all previous systems, DC power comes out of the solar panels. And now instead of going into a microinverter, it goes into what's called a DC optimizer. So this essentially uh, is a buck boost converter technically, which ups or downs the voltage of that panel. It adjusts the, the voltage and the current curves to match the other panels that are in the system so that essentially they don't mess with each other at all anymore. And now as a bonus, you also get panel level monitoring so you can still see what's going wrong if there's a panel going wrong 
unlike microinverters, these DC optimizers actually output DC, and so they take that off the roof, and then in your garage, you or next to your, your power meter, depending on where you end up placing your, your inverter, you have a single centralized inverter, as in generation one, that does all the inverting. And then that creates AC power, which goes into your breaker panel and can go back onto the grid and how power your home. The benefit of this system is that it turns out that it's actually just more efficient to do all of the inverting in one big piece of equipment than to spread it among 20 tiny pieces of equipment. And so you get, I don't want to say a much higher percentage of efficiency, but you definitely get a non-negligible amount of efficiency boost by doing this. So I'm looking at the SolarEdge inverter datasheet right now, and they have their CEC weighted efficiency at 99% efficient. So 99% of the power that's coming out of those solar systems is effectively turned into AC power. This is a really good, really, really good. On the other hand, we have a data sheet for the IQ7 N-phase microinverters. Looking down at the CEC weighted efficiency, it's at 97% efficient, which is still really great. But it's you know in the solar game, it's all about maximizing efficiencies here. And so that extra 2% does go a long way. There are some other issues when it comes to the N-phase microinverter systems versus solar edge. Um, of course, Solar Edge has its downsides as well, that you still do have a single centralized inverter. So if that goes down, it does take your entire system down. It is worth pointing out that both Enphase and Solar Edge have the option to get 25-year warranties. And so if your inverter does go down, they are guaranteeing that they'll come out and replace it. It usually happens within a couple of weeks. Or if you're in a region where, I don't know, their, uh, their, um, their trucks are down and their service teams are you know, completely booked out, you could be looking at a couple months. So. I guess at the end of the day, the way the, 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 the long story short that I would give this is that if you're a customer who loves buying car insurance with a very high premium, but your car is totally covered under all circumstances, you should get microinverters. But if you're the kind of person that gets the lowest possible state mandated insurance for your car, you should get the solar edge system because you are essentially trading higher risk for better efficiency. So is it worth having lower efficiency all the time in case your inverter goes down and you're out for a couple weeks, maybe, I mean, it's up to you and what your circumstances are. So there are some other downsides for Solar Edge compared to Enphase, um, or sorry, vice versa, Enphase compared to Solar Edge when it comes to battery systems. This is something really important that I think most people don't really realize, is that if you're trying to integrate a battery into the system or an electric vehicle, which is just a big battery on wheels, what ends up happening is that of course, you have the DC power coming off of your roof, and it gets to ground level. But now, instead of turning it into AC, it just can use that DC power and put it straight into a battery. Batteries operate fundamentally off of DC. And then when it's time to take that power and you actually want to use it out of your battery, it can go back into the single inverter, and the inverter can do the work of inverting all the power from the panels and all the power from the battery, so you don't need a separate piece of equipment. You would think, you, you'd think that, oh, a electric vehicle is just batteries on wheels. It would be the same thing where it can go in here like this. But as it turns out, modern EVs are not set up like this. They are expecting that you're going to give them AC power. And so they, they have its own system inside to turn it from AC back to DC. And although there are fast charging DC systems out on the market, you don't really see that on the consumer level to uh, EV charging market right now, just because it's it's not super, super, con it, not every household in America has a solar system. And so the car makers need to kind of build it for just every use case. I do think in the future, they're gonna change it so that your cars can be powered DC from your your solar system, but it's not the case right now. So it does actually come out AC into your car charger, not totally ideal. So why is this all important? Well. Your battery, every time that you switch it from, or I should say that the electricity, every time you switch it from AC to DC or DC back to AC, you lose efficiency in every step that you do that. So let's look at how it would work in the Enphase microinverter system or really any microinverter system. Okay, so I have to do that, 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 boom. The SunPower microinverters versus 
end phase microinverters, they operate pretty much the same way. So in this case, we have DC power comes off the panels, goes into the microinverters, and then AC comes off of your roof. So at ground level, you only really have access to the AC side of the circuit. So now, when you want to use a battery, you would have to take this AC power, go into what's called a rectifier, which turns it back into DC. It goes into your battery. And then when it's time to use the power from your battery, let's say it's at night or the power goes out or whatever, that DC power from the battery goes and it gets inverted in a different microinverter that's usually integrated into the battery system. Because you can't repurpose the inverters that are on your roof, you have to have a dedicated microinverter. So it's more equipment um, with more steps of conversions where you lose efficiency. So this microinverter turns it back into AC, and then it goes into your home, back onto the grid, if you so choose. And then, of course, in the same system, EVs still use AC power. But that should give you a nice little overview of how these systems work and what the downsides of them are. I used to work for a company that primarily installed SolarEdge inverter systems, and SolarEdge systems are great. I mean, they have a real lot of really interesting smart home integrations that you can do because you have access to that eight, uh, DC side of the circuit. So for example, you can get a smart home water heater where if you are generating excess solar power and you decide instead of selling it back to the grid, I would like to preheat all of my water for the nighttime, it can do that because it can just send that DC power straight into the, the water heater. Um, it, you could also get smart home panels and do a lot of really interesting stuff like that, which you, couldn't, you can't really do with the Enphase system. Enphase has released some kind of interesting technology in the last couple years. For example, they are now claiming that you can get home battery, or sorry, home backup if you have a solar system. Even if you don't have a battery, if the power goes out, you'll still keep your power. But the, the problem with this, even though it like technically works, is that if you don't have a battery integrated with the system, if you're just relying on there being a continuous amount of sunlight, is that if a cloud passes over your solar system and you get a sudden drop off in power, suddenly all of your devices instantly lose power. And that's cutting power to devices, especially modern smart home devices, refrigerators, anything that has embedded firmware, embedded microprocessors, um, it, it does not work well. Um, and you can end up actually bricking devices by cutting power to it at just the wrong time. So it's sort of problematic. I mean, I really do recommend that if you're going to get a solar system and want backup of some kind for when the grid goes out, you should really get a battery of some kind, even if it's really, really small, just to smooth out some of those variations. But if you're strapped for cash, you definitely can go with the Enphase products that don't require a battery to give you home backup. Just be aware it might not really work exactly how you want it to work. Also, people don't realize this, but there's a bunch of other pieces of equipment that are required to get your home to be able to be off the grid. Um, for example, you have to have a, a, an automatic disconnect. So essentially, if the power goes out, this piece of equipment detects that, hey, there's no more power coming from the grid. It's time to cut us off from the grid and create our own little mini uh, isolated home grid, so to speak. Because the what you really don't want to do is you don't want to have power back feeding back onto the grid when it's when the grid operators think that there's no power in the grid and then somebody goes to repair the lines and they think there's no power on there and actually you're back feeding some power to them and you accidentally electrocute somebody really, really bad. So that's why these additional pieces of safety equipment are required. When it comes to pricing, they're about the same. Um, at least in my experience, I'm sure that your local installers will have differences in pricing, Enphase or SolarEdge or whatever other microinverters might be a little bit different, some different in price, but it's not like double as expensive or something. It's usually maybe a couple thousand dollars more, and it really comes down to what the supplier relationships are for your local installers. At least for us, Enphase tended to be a little bit more expensive only because, I mean, we also had a relationship with SolarEdge. But it seemed like even without that relationship, it was still a little bit more expensive, but not not enough to really make that big of a difference. Oh, the other thing I forgot to talk about is that the benefit of the Solar Edge system too is that it works way more efficiently um, when you scale to really large systems. There are some electrical code nuances that come up when you're trying to have a Solar Edge system, or sorry, a 
any solar system, um, but specifically with the Enphase system, you get limited by the amount of power that you can put onto um, your breaker panel, and I believe it has to do with the bus bars and the physical size of the bus bars and what that can hold. There's a certain amount of oversizing that you can do. Solar Edge allows you to put more panels on the roof um, because of some quirks and some, I don't want to call them loopholes, but basically you can, uh, you can put more panels on your roof, but the inverter doesn't necessarily invert all of that power. Um, and so you get the situation where you can have a bunch of panels and at the peak of the summer, during the peak of the day when you're generating the most power, your inverter will clip off the top of what you're generating. But then that allows you to, in the winter, when you're producing less power, um, you now have the availability to have more panels on your roof so that you can still produce more power and not get clipped. Um, whereas Enphase, you sort of like are not allowed to have that many panels on the roof, whether it's going to be producing power in the summer or the winter. Um, I, I know that was kind of a bad explanation. Uh, it's a pr pretty complicated um, electrical like code nuance. And to be honest, I don't really like fully understand the, the details on that, but I do know the big picture that Solar Edge lets you put way more panels onto the system. The other thing I want to mention is that it is pr more pr cost effective usually if you're getting a really small solar system to just go with microinverters because at that point it's not really worth getting a big inverter if you're only inverting the power from like seven panels or something like that you should just go with a, a small microinverter system if i was buying a solar system right now would i go Enphase or solar edge Ooh, that's <laughs> it's a hard one i think that it would really depend on what my personal risk tolerance is i think that if i was in a situation where maybe I had a family with kids and I was in a place where the grid goes down or there's a risk to the grid going down, I would honestly go with Enphase because even though it's less efficient to use batteries with it, you do have more fundamental reliability. If I was in the situation where I just wanted the maximum amount of solar savings, I would go with Solar Edge. Um, but yeah, that's my two cents. Hope this was helpful. Uh, if you'd like to book a call with me um, and I can get you bids from your local installers, check out the link in the description. But otherwise, hope that was helpful. See you next time.